Okay. Um, well, we're learning the dinam of Erdig and Kippur. Okay, so we learned um, in the, there's a mitzvah to eat two meals on Yom, Erdig Yom Kippur. But it says that certain foods you shouldn't eat at all in Erdig Yom Kippur, and certain foods you can eat in the morning suda, not in the afternoon suda. So, for instance, it says you shouldn't eat garlic or eggs the whole day out of Yom Kippur. Both meals, you don't eat eggs or garlic. But Yom Kippur, it's the whole day Yeah, yeah. This year, Yom Kippur is Wednesday, Tuesday morning to Tuesday night. You don't eat. Now, um, in this first meal in the morning, you're supposed to have like two Shabbos meals in out of Yom Kippur, one in the morning and one after Mincha. So the one in the morning, you can eat fish, the customers to eat fish. In the afternoon, so that what's called Suda Mafsekis, it says in Allah you shouldn't eat fish. There's a lot of reasons, but physical reasons also, not only. Uh, so in the morning, you have uh, fish. They're also, the custom is also to eat kreplach. Kreplach is meat covered in dough. Okay? We eat it at Shana Rabba, we eat it at Avim Kippur, we eat it at Ampurim. Uh, there is three times that a year that there's, there's a custom, especially according to Kabbalah, to eat kreplach. Now, there's a story told with the Rebbe, this is what they tell the story, that one time, that one of those times, there, there was no kreplach in the Rebbe's house, and the Rebbe took a piece of chicken, and took a piece of challah, and like made a dentation in the challah, and he put the kreplach into the challah, and he said, no, now I got kreplach. You know, I got kreplach. So uh, it's definitely not worth fighting over any of Yom Kippur, that's for sure. Okay, um, okay, you don't, okay, you shouldn't eat, also you shouldn't eat, like it says, shumsh and poppy seeds, things that keep coming up. That's one of the reasons you don't eat nuts on Rosh Hashanah, besides the fact chet equals egeis, the uh, nut equals chet, but uh, the main reason is because it actually causes a lot of phlegm. Nuts and seeds cause a lot of phlegm, so you're gonna, instead of davening, you're gonna be going Huh? Yeah, you should be doing. Okay, now we learned, this, this, uh, so we learned you go to the mikveh three times, and many people have a custom. If you're only going once, you go before mincha. That's like the best time of the three. But our custom is we go in the morning either before davening or malchus, I mean, before Kapodis, which we spoke about yesterday. And then before Mincha, you get Malkus, and you go to Mikveh, and then you dab in Mincha. That's what? Uh, it counts, but it's not, uh, it's not the real thing. Let's put it that way. If somebody has no choice, they can go to a Mikveh, they should go to a pool. Uh, yeah, but it's better to go at least once to a... Above ground mikveh is still connected to the ground. No, it's like sitting in all those like, like, No, no, no. They have to be connected to the ground. If not, it's not a kosher mikveh. Right. Even for men. Well, but I'm saying if it's a above ground mikveh. Which is least of the worst. No, then he say, I'm saying it, that the mikveh has to be connected to the ground or else it's not a mikveh. And it's a swimming pool. <clears throat> the mikveh has to be connected even for men. You know, you don't need rainwater for a man, you need, but it has to be connected to the ground, or in the ground, connected to the ground. One of the above. So the custom is like this, you face north, because north, the Gemara says, is where gold comes from, and all problems start because of money, as we know. So you face, you head north, your backside south, and then somebody takes a belt, and they tap, they don't hit hard. I mean, you could if you want. But if this is the back of the person, okay? So then you go like this. You go in a triangle, like a sego, okay? And you give 39 malkas. Now the Pasuk, has 13 words. So three times 13 is 39. 
So the custom is you do vahu, rachum, yachapet, oven, vala, yashkas, yahiba, la, shiv, apa, vala, you know, every word, both the whipper and the guy gets, the whippy, the guy that's getting whipped also says the vahu, rachum. It doesn't have to be done in the mikveh. People don't, sometimes they do it in the mikveh because there's people there to do it to them. You're waiting lines. What? You can't say that. No, if it's in the mikveh, it could be an outer room. No, you don't do it in the... <laughs> um, with uh, the second meal, it's, you could do it also before mincha? The minute gets to do it after mincha. Can you do it to yourself? What? Hit yourself? Yeah. It's pretty hard. No, somebody else should do it. It doesn't work. No, somebody else should do it for you. What? What? In halacha it says a son is allowed to give the father malchus because not really malchus. He's just it's preferred not to. It says, but if there's nobody else, halacha says a son can give a father. You can eat nothing for the first. No, no, no. With all your clothes on. What? Can you? You could technically eat, but again, you don't eat. Um, yeah, you can. You could. You don't eat. Um, eggs and things like that. Yeah. Could a wife yeah. do malchus for the husband? A wife could do malchus for the husband if she's allowed to. She does it all Okay, next. Okay, so you have to do uh, the mikveh before mincha. Now, uh, why? Because you want to confess the sins, which we do every Yom Kippur at mincha. You have to confess, we want to confess impurity. Now, ideally, you know, everybody knows Ervin Kippur. We spoke yesterday about the, the money for tzedakah. Now, Mincha Ervin Kippur, you say the whole Al-Chet. Okay? Why do we say Al-Chet at Mincha? Why don't we say it? The proper time for saying it, by the way, in Halacha, is before Yom Kippur starts. So, therefore, it says in Halacha, in Armin Hogim, Oh, so in Shkunach it says the proper time to do vidui really is right before Yom Kippur. And then again, Mairev, and you know, twice Mairev, twice Shachas. But it says, why do we do it in Mincha? It's a very interesting reason. Because somebody might choke in the Sudam of Sekis, and they might die, and then they won't have to be confessed. So therefore, we play it safe, we do it in Mincha. In case, God forbid, somebody dies at Sudam of Sekis, at least they'll be pure <laughs> and, and confess before Yom Kippur's died. But it says in Halacha, therefore, before Kol Nidre, it's appropriate that a person should do al privately. Privately themselves to do al -Khet. Okay, next. Can we do it before the night parking of the The Ilan. Yeah, uh, before uh, Kornigla, sorry. No, before. Before the no? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, now, when it comes to, once you finish, and this is a very practical then, I'm going to talk about it tonight in the Zoom class also. Um, okay, women have to light chop Yom Tov candles, Yom Kippur candles, right? The Brach Zlatik, Hanshiyah, Makipurim, and Shech the men don't make Kiddush, so the men make a Shekhyonu at the end of Kol Nidre, before Mairiv, every, all the men make a Shekhyonu. The Chazan starts, Baruch Hato, and then everybody says the, uh, the Shekhyonu that they can answer Amen before the Chazan finishes. That they can answer Amen on the Chazan's bracha. But it says, people have to be told about this, it says that women that made Shekhyonu at candle lighting time, don't make it in shul again when the men are making it. The men make it in shul because there's no kiddush. Like this we learned, women make the shechionu a candle lighting, men make the shechionu a kiddush. But men are not making kiddush, so they say shechionu after kol nidre, before ma'ayinuf. But if a woman said it already, then she does not say it again. Be a brach in vain. Next is like this. Once a woman benches licht, once a woman lays the yom of candles, technically it's yom for her. Now, there are a lot of scenarios 
People want to drive to show for Yom Kippur, before Yom Kippur starts. Not on Yom Kippur, God forbid, but before Yom Kippur, they want to drive to show. So the question is, if a woman likes Yom Tov candles, is she allowed to go in a car to drive to the show before Kol Nidre? Problem is, once she likes the candles, by her it's Yom Tov already. It's Yom Tov, you're not allowed to drive. So the din is like this. If a woman makes a condition when she's lighting candles, that she's not accepting Shabbos Yom Tif yet. She's not accepting Yom Tif. She has, okay, if somebody in the house or her, somebody that's remaining home, must accept Yom Tif within 10 minutes of her lighting. Within 10 minutes of her lighting, she has to make, accept Yom Tif. If nobody else is now sees a husband and wife and they're both driving to show and there's nobody in the house accepting Yom Tif, she only has 10 minutes to not desecrate Yom Tif. Once it's more than 10 minutes, she cannot do it, they'll be driving anymore. So if the show is 20 minutes away, you can't do it unless it's somebody at home accepts Yom Tif. And if it's five minutes away, you could do it. So that's the story with driving after Lich mentioned. No, because the passenger in the car is also not keeping Yom Tif. Uh, and Yom Tif would be a half a problem, but on Yom Kippur it's a big problem. Shabbos is the same thing? Yeah. That's what Dalt Rebbe holds. So someone's in the house that accepted Shabbos, she could have even in. Until Shkia. If somebody in the house accepted Yom Tif within 10 minutes of her lighting, this is then the whole Shabbos in the Lichbench, it's not in the Yom Tif. But according to Alt Rebbe, it has to be within 10 minutes. Other people hold differently, but I'm saying what the Alt Rebbe holds. That you have to be, somebody has to be in Kabul Shabbos within 10 minutes. Otherwise, you're not allowed to do it. Men, also when they come to show for Yom Kippur, the meaning is to wear a talus at night, but you have to make the bracha before sundown. So you have to make sure to come to show the men before sundown, because after sundown, you can't make a bracha on a talus anymore. You could wear, we wear it Yom Kippur night. It's the only night we wear a talus. I mean, because after dark is not the time of tzitzis. So you can't make a bracha on something you're not obligated to do then. What? You could put it on with, if a guy comes late, let's say they come, uh, shkia is, let's say, 7 o'clock, and they come in 7.10, you can put on a talus, but they can't make a bracha on it. After sundown. Yom Kippur is unique. Yom Kippur is because we're all like angels, it's above time and place. It, it's a whole different. But halachically, you can't make a brach after, after sundown on the talus. Because night. Yeah? The night before you have to If the Yom Kippur is Wednesday, Tuesday night before sundown. You have to put it on and make a bracha. What? Your big talus? No. Unless if you stay a whole night in shul and you fall asleep in it. You wear it for davening and after davening you take it off. It's also customary in our circles at least, they suddenly they don't do this, but by Ashkenazim that the men wear a kittel, you know, the white thing on, uh, on Yom Kippur. The reason for that is to remind us of, it's a the shrouds that a person is buried in. So it's to remind us, number one, we're pure like angels, and also to remind us of Yom Hamisa. It's very interesting, in most places, even Rosh Hashanah, the guy that Davin Shachris wears a kittel, the guy that blows Shafer wears a kittel, the guy that Davin Mosef wears a kittel, in all shows. In Chabad, the only time we wear a kittel is on Yom Kippur. And a chosim when he gets married. Now, a chassan who wore it, got married in the past year before Yom Kippur, so then he doesn't even wear a kittel the first year he's married because he already wore it on his Yom Kippur, which was the day he got married. But otherwise, Chabad only wears a kittel only, only when uh, the Sudra writes, only Yom Kippur. Why does that one Yom Kippur make up for the next in terms of the kittel? Because that's his real Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, I mean, yeah, like a few months or whatever, 
Doesn't matter. That's what the Rebbe writes. The first year you wore it already once, it's once a year. The kittle, I told you to remind us the purity of like angels, white, you know, angels. You ever see pictures of angels? They're always white. Not the ones I see. Yeah, Ashkenazi custom. Sfidim don't wear, Sfidim don't wear a kittle. There's, White everything. Yeah, they, they tend tradition, but not yeah, but make sure if they're cheating and they eat on Yom Kippur, when they bow down, they shouldn't get dirty. Because that would be a problem.